Give me fuel, give me fire, give me that which I desire Ooh. Today we're going to go over drilling and tapping Toyota IFS gearboxes for Hydro Assist. This is a full drive IFS gearbox that pulled out of a truck earlier today. We're going to show you how to drill and tap it for Hydro Assist the right way. Tools that you're absolutely positively going to need are going to be an air electric impact, a 14 millimeter socket, a sharpie or a marking tool of any kind, automatic center punch, quarter inch to 7 16 drill bit stepping up, a rubber mallet, a quarter by 18 national pipe thread tap, and a drill. A couple of things that I found that make this job easier is going to be a tape measure, a bottom tap, a piece of string, 3 16 rat tail file, a couple magnets, and an adjustable wrench. Before we start tearing into the gearbox, we're going to need to center it. The easiest way to do that is marking your input and sector shafts on the splines. We're going to start at the sector shaft, mark the box itself, and the gear that is underneath. Next, we marked the input shaft at the housing of the gearbox and the shaft itself. We're going to turn it and make sure that we have about four and a quarter turns all the way one way. There's one, two, three, four, and a quarter. So we're going to go back two and an eighth of a turn, and that's going to be our center. One, two, and an eighth. And that should be dead between these two marks right here. Now we're good to start tearing into the gearbox. Take your 14 millimeter socket and pull off your sector shaft. Make sure you keep your mount bolts. You can throw away this little bracket, you won't need it later. Once our gearbox is centered and we got the mount bolts for our our sector shaft removed, we're going to pull the sector shaft. This always leaves quite a bit of mess. For now you can take the sector shaft and leave it set aside. Boxes that are in IFS trucks that are third gen have a centering valve on top of the input shaft. Before pulling the input shaft, we need to pull this centering valve. It's a very important step. If you have a second gen gearbox, you don't have this centering valve, then you can disregard this step. What we're going to need is a 10 millimeter Allen head. The most, the best way to do this that I've found is to use an impact driver. Every time it gets it out. So in here is going to be your centering valve cap. The spring should be a two-piece clevis pin. The clevis pin and its sleeve. Set all these aside for later because you'll need them when you reassemble your gearbox. Now we're good to pull our input shaft. Alright, pulling the input shaft is one of the most dangerous parts of pulling apart a gearbox. You want to make sure that this plunger doesn't unspin because there's a ton of little ball bearings in there. If you pull that out, you'll never be able to get it back together and you have to get a new internal for your gearbox. Once the gearbox is, once the input shaft is out, there's a Teflon ring that goes on the very back of the plunger. You're going to want to inspect that 
to make sure it's not too worn or not chipped up. It didn't catch on the internal of the gearbox when you pulled it. So you can set this aside for now and clean it up for later use. Now that all the shafts are pulled and we're left with nothing but the bare housing, we're going to go ahead and mark our holes to start the drilling. The thing that I use that um, helps a lot get this hole centered is a piece of string in this 316 rat tail file. The reason you want to use these is because there's a vein that runs all the way through the gearbox to the back where the plunger for the input shaft sits. The reason we're going to tap into this is because this port is going to give us pressure to the right side of our actuator forcing our wheels left. So what I do is I set the string over the hole and hold it in with a file. Run the string all the way across to where the vein sits and then mark your hole to get punched anywhere. This guarantees every time you drill you're going to be dead center in that vein. You do not want to miss that vein otherwise you're drilling it for no reason. We got our hole marked. Now we're going to start drilling. I start with a quarter inch or a eighth inch bit. The reason being is because you want it to be smaller than three sixteenths, which is the inside diameter of that hole. You want the bit to fit in and make that clunk sound and that clunk feel once you hit the bottom of the hole. That's when you stop drilling. If you drill too deep, you go into the housing and you're done. The gearbox is toast. You gotta throw it away and start it with a new. The internals might be good, but the outside of the gearbox is toast. You gotta start over. Now we're gonna start drilling. Now that we've drilled our hole to our quarter inch, I'm gonna take the drill bit, put it all the way down to the bottom of the hole, hold it with my finger, and measure it out. It comes out to about seven eighths of an inch. So what I did was I took masking tape and set all my drill bits at seven eighths of an inch to mark them so that I don't drill too low. Now the lighting's not too good for you to see, but if you could, if you could see, you'd notice that drilling down, I hit perfectly in the center of that vein. And that happens every time when I use that string across here. So that is the best way that I found to do it. It's not the only way, but it's the best way that I found. Now we're gonna go ahead and drill this out to seven sixteenths. We just drilled our hole out to the seven sixteenths. If you can come over here, you can see that we hit the vein just about center. Tracked a little bit to the outside, but that's fine. There's plenty of meat around it for it to make, not make that big of a difference. Now we're going to start tapping. Like I stated at the beginning of the video, we're going to use a quarter by 18 national pipe thread tap. We're going to go ahead and start tapping this now. So after we tapped it with our regular tap, I chased it with my bottom tap to make sure we can get the fitting all the way down. Every time before I call a hole good, I take the fitting that I use. These are the fittings that I use for it. It's a quarter inch at a 90 degree angle with a B-nut on it so you can thread your hydro assist line on it. You want it to thread it at least two and a half turns on its own before you have to use a wrench to tighten it. One, two, we got three, about three and a half, three and three quarters. So that's plenty of room. We're not going to go too deep to block off that valve because I didn't even tap it that far and I know this fitting will be far enough. Plus when I put Teflon tape on it, it'll seal up real well. Now we're going to turn the gearbox over, drill and tap the next hole. Now we're going to be drilling and tapping the last hole in the gearbox. This hole is going to send pressure to the left side of the actuator forcing our wheels right. The reason we're drilling it here is because that's where the fluid flow is, is right behind this. This area of the gearbox is going to get fluid out this line and it's going to turn our wheels to the right. The way I mark it, a lot of people go all between the D and the A of Toyota. The reason I don't do that is because a lot of the guys that need these gearboxes push them too far forward in the firewall to make that hole effective. So I go two and a half inches down from the sector valve to the sector shaft seat and then three quarter inch from this right here. Now that gives me plenty of room to work with as far as the thickness of the gearbox and it gives it the perfect placement for my fitting to come out at a 90 and go down. Our hole's marked. Now that we've drilled and tapped our last hole, I made sure that the fitting I'm going to use works in there. I made sure that it threaded at least two and a half turns by hand and then threaded the rest with a wrench. It's going to sit just about perfect. This is how the fitting's going to sit, allowing the line to go down and then around the frame 
to the left side of the actuator. We still have about five threads that are inside the gearbox and it doesn't poke all the way through to interfere with the sector shaft. So this isn't going to be a problem at all. Now we're going to take the fitting out, clean out the gearbox, to get ready for reassembly. I blocked off all the ports with some rags to keep most of the metal shavings down. This is possibly the most important part of your drilling and tapping. You can do a fantastic job tapping the holes and drilling them out, but if you don't clean the gearbox, make sure that all of the metal shavings are out of it, then you can ruin your gearbox. Not only are you going to inspect the, in the internals of the gearbox, you're going to look at all your bearings for your sector shafts, make sure this seal is good all the way around. You have a seal here and a Teflon ring in the back. Just run your finger across, make sure you don't feel any uh, gouges or pieces of metal in there. The bearings inside should spin freely, shouldn't be chunks missing out of them. The reason I use these magnets is to get all those metal shavings out of this vein right here. My 316's file, rat tail file. Stick it down in the hole there and touch it with the magnet. Any metal shavings that are in there should already come out. I've already cleaned this port pretty well. Once the housing's good, we can set that aside. I'm going to focus on the input shaft. There's a couple seals on here that are really important. We're going to be watching this Teflon ring right here when we reinstall to make sure it doesn't catch on the housing. We'll show you that in a minute. This O-ring right here that seals up, I'm going to go along this and make sure that the O-ring itself is just fine. It's not cracked or split because if it is, you'll know it when you start putting pressure on it. Once you know your input shaft is good, turn our attention to the sector shaft. This is usually the ring that goes out in gearboxes. So do a really good look over this O-ring right here and make sure that all's well with it. If there's anything's going to happen, if the gearbox is going to leak, you can see it now and you can check it. If any of your O-rings or Teflon seals are gouged or cracked or torn, you can go to Napa. And this is just a real, real quick power steering reseal kit that I got. If any of these O-rings or Teflon rings are uh, in bad shape at all, you can replace them with one of these. I suggest getting these one of these before you even do the gearbox to start out with so you're not stuck and you need parts. Most of these seals look pretty well. I'm going to go over the rest of it and uh, then we'll start reassembly. Now that our gearbox is completely clean, all the metal shavings are out, we're going to get ready for reassembly. Took a little bit of brake cleaner and clean the mating surface where the input shaft is going to go in and I clean the surface of the input shaft. And then I take some RTV and put around the surface just for some extra sealant. It's not it's, I don't think it's necessary, but I just do it anyway just for a backup sealant. Some people swear by red RTV. I just use the gray stuff. There's no reason for your gearbox to get that hot. If it is, you have more problems than inadequate sealant. So we'll take the input shaft. You don't have to spline it all the way out the way it was. You can just leave it spline all the way in so you don't mess up with those ball bearings. Just sort of face it the right way. You can use a little bit of grease or some power steering fluid for some assembly lube putting it back together so it slips in. When we go into the gearbox we're going to be watching this Teflon ring right here to make sure it doesn't get cut where the sector shaft meets the input shaft. Watch really carefully right here on that Teflon ring where it meets that sharp edge as it goes in. Make sure it doesn't get caught. That one went in real smooth, so there's going to be no problems there. There it goes. It's seated in, and then you can take and turn your input shaft where your rag joint goes and turn it so those three gears are centered. So your sector shaft, when it goes in, it'll mate up properly. I'm going to throw a couple of pieces of mounting hardware in, and then we'll get to the centering valve. Now that we got our input shaft in and it's centered, we're going to install our centering valve reverse order from what it came out. I'm going to put the outer clevis pin around the inner clevis pin, set it down inside the gearbox, place your spring inside your cap, 
and that's going to set the centering valve. Centering valve installed. Now we're going to seal it up and get ready to put the sector shaft in. Alright, we have our input shaft and centering valve in. I cleaned up the mating surface and put some RTV on it. I'm going to get ready to put our sector shaft in. These three teeth right here are going to line up with the three teeth on the input shaft. Going to set it in. Send it home. Now we'll take a couple of the mount bolts, get them to line up. mount bolts in. I'm going to take some Teflon tape and our quarter inch plugs. Plug our newly tapped holes. The reason I do that is because it allows whoever's going to use this gearbox to remove their old gearbox and install this and allow it to use with their stock power steering setup so they can work on your actuator, your lines, all the line routings, welding the tabs on your steering arm on the axle housing itself. So you can do all that but you can while you're working on that you can still have your truck running so these lines will plug what I do and I suggest is keep these plugged with you in the glove box of your truck or in one of the toolboxes just in case you snag a line one of your lines fail have an issue with your power steering or your hydro assist setup you don't have to puke fluid all over the place you can just plug it up so what we're going to do now is let this RTV soak overnight let it dry we'll install the hardware all the rest of the way tighten everything down torque it to spec and then get it ready for some paint. Once you're done with one gearbox, go ahead and set it on the shelf, get it ready to go, and start on your next one.